For quite some time now, Netflix and other streaming platforms have changed the filmmaking landscape. Most probably feel that a modernization in this space is long overdue and the pivot ignited by COVID was inevitable. Now more than ever before, we're seeing a massive influx in direct to digital new release movies. And the verdict is out as to whether or not this trend will continue. After all, some trends have been pretty great and others, why? Why? So the point of this video isn't necessarily around the delivery mechanisms for new movies. It's the approach to producing films for smaller screens and the impact that might have on the overall quality and feel of cinema moving forward. Okay, before I continue, let me know down in the comments your thoughts on if you feel that movies released direct to streaming platforms just have a lower quality, lower budget vibe to them. Or do you not feel any differences between movies that are released on these streaming platforms versus those released and intended for the big screen in the theaters? Let me know below. Some people feel like Netflix just creates movies with big name actors and moderately intriguing stories that are good enough just to get people to click on them. They oftentimes feel like they aren't produced at the same level of films that are made for the big screen. And I'm here to tell you, that's exactly the case. You see, when a movie is being made for the small screen, certain decisions are made that will work better for a home viewing experience. For example, you're going to see more close-up or medium close-up shots of one or two characters as they work through their lines and interact with one another. Extreme wide, wide, and even full shots are far and few between, on films made for the small screens. Those shots simply just don't capture the attention of viewers as well as they do on the big screen. Another thing you'll find in streaming movies is a different take in editing. Producing films for small screens generally means you're going to have less lingering shots and more scene transitions. This is because that immersion that pulls you in at the theater doesn't really happen at home. So while an ultra wide shot with a couple of characters conversing as they slowly move across screen works great at the theater, it can quickly lose interest at a home television. So you're gonna see a lot less of that on movies made for home viewing. And this is actually very similar to how content is made for YouTube. If this video didn't have supporting images and videos popping up throughout, you'd likely lose interest in just sitting here and watching me talk for several minutes because it's simply not visually stimulating enough. So these films are made with consideration on capturing and retaining the viewer's attention throughout the runtime. A great example that illustrates my point is the 2021 Netflix film Red Notice. There are a handful of wide angle shots in this film, but they are generally only during a travel sequence and they are not on screen for long. There's this one semi wide shot of Dwayne Johnson about to cross a bridge on his way to an escape helicopter, but it literally lasts less than a second. Before he can cross the bridge, a guy with a rocket launcher pops up, and this prompts Johnson's character to begin running across the bridge. Now, I can envision an epic wide angle shot for the big screen, where you have Johnson maybe right of center and the rocket launcher guy off to the far right and the escape helicopter off to the far left. We see Johnson begin to run across the bridge and maybe they drop the frame rate, giving us that slow motion effect as he attempts to get away from the rocket launcher. We see the firing of the rocket and it's slowly closing in on the rock. I mean, on Dwayne Johnson. Can you tell I watched wrestling when I was a kid? Anyway, I can just see this shot in my mind and can imagine it being so epic, but they didn't do that. We instead get several medium shots that are chaotically chopping us back and forth between Johnson and the rocket launcher guy and the helicopter and the bridge. And this chaos that is created in front of us is what keeps us engaged as we await the next shot that progresses us through this scene. I can't help but imagine how good that scene would have looked on the big screen as I described it a moment ago. And before you say anything in the comments, yes, I am aware Red Notice did release to theaters, I think a few days, maybe a week before Netflix, but it is ultimately a film that was produced for the Netflix ecosystem and home viewing experience. Hey, before we get to the next couple of points on this, listen, you made it. Most people these days with their TikTok attention spans can't make it this far into a video, but not you. You're different. Welcome to the club. Comment below and let me know you made it here. I will see your comment. It will make me smile. And that's going to make you smile. And it will be a glorious experience for both of us. Oh, and subscribe so we can keep smiling together in the future. One other possibility as to why we feel the quality of streaming movies is lower 
is a product of our subconscious. It's possible that we've been conditioned to think that movies made for a streaming platform are not made with the same quality and care and attention to detail as those made for theatrical release. So we automatically place a lower value on them. Before streaming platforms existed, we recognized a very clear difference in quality in the movies released on television versus those released in the theaters. So maybe we still hold on to this idea and feeling that movies that we watch at home are just not as good as those we experience at the theater. An important thing to note here is that movies that are made for theatrical releases that also get a streaming release are going to hit much differently depending on which screen the viewer chooses. The 2021 film Dune is a great example of this. I made a huge mistake of watching Dune at home and not in the theater, and it honestly fell a bit flat for me. But I know why this is, and I could tell as I was watching it that it would have been epic to experience on the big screen. The grandeur of this film really needs to be experienced in a theater setting, at least for the first viewing. Ultimately, I believe there's room for both types of movies to exist. I enjoy Red Notice for what it is, and I enjoy big films like Dune for what they are. We simply need to understand that these films are intentionally produced for their intended experiences, and those experiences are going to feel very different. So let me know your thoughts on all of this down below. Thank you for being here. I'll see you guys in the next one.